there was so much going on with me emotionally and mentally that I could not place. Hi, you guys. My name is Soso. A lot of you know me as Shades of Soso on all platforms. On my channel, I talk about my experience living in Canada. I talk about my love for perfumes. I talk about my love for fashion and all things life experiences in general. And today we are talking about my life updates. The last time I sat here to do a life update was 2021. And so we're, you know, giving an update because I've been MIA for a bit, for a very long time. And if I had a dollar for how many times you guys have messaged, harassed me on social media. So, so when are you coming back to YouTube? So, so when are you, when is the next video? So, so what's going on? If I had a dollar, I would be on Forbes magazine. But I love you guys. I know that you guys are happy to see me back because I'm happy to sit here and chat with you guys. And yeah, so let's get right on because if you leave me, I'm going to keep rambling. So what happened? By the way, if you're new here, welcome, welcome. This video is not following the actual tradition that we do here. So take me as you see me for today because I've lost, I've forgotten how it goes. So I'm just doing vibes and inshallah right now. If you're new here, welcome. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. You will love it here. If you're an OG member, welcome back. You know how we do it here. So hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on your notification and stay, okay? Because we are back. So 2022, my birthday. A lot of you know I had lost my mom in 2021 and a lot had happened um, after that. I was going through that phase and I, I wanted to help myself out of all of that. So my birthday was quite exciting for me because I needed something, you know, to give me hope again, something to boost my mood. So I really, really planned my birthday. I made it big. The funny thing is a lot of people who would hear me say this now, who had seen me in that period, would not even believe I was going through it, would not believe I was having suicidal thoughts at the time. After my birthday, after all the highs had gone from my birthday, I was back to grieving. I was back to being depressed. I was back to just hating life, not being interested in anything because I had lost a piece of me with that experience. And that piece of me till today is something I'm still trying to find. I haven't found it. I don't know where it is. I don't know if I'll ever find it, but I know that something in me had changed. Something in me had gone missing with that experience. And it, it was worse for me because I live in this country where I'm all by myself. I keep saying that in all my videos because it's my reality. And this place is a place where life moves fast, regardless of what's going on with you life was fast and so i felt like i didn't have a time to really sit with what had happened to me to so even like go through that experience you know there was no time it was like pam it happened pam 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 i'm back to work pam back, back to life pam you know it was just going and i thought i could handle it right but i'm a big girl you know I came all this way by myself. I've been doing the shit, but I'm an OG. But because I did not give myself that time, it came at me. You can't cheat life, you know? It came at me. It was like, okay, pack it up. Now your birthday is done. Pack it up immediately. And so April, May was hard. I was, I was suicidal, y'all, but I'm just grateful to God because I had a friend who did not let me out of his sight. And I think that was the only reason my thoughts did not come to reality that period because even when he wasn't physically here, he was still on me. Like he was on he was on my case steady, like not letting me out of his sight, like trying to tell me you're enough. You're going through this. Yes, but there is more to life. There is... <sighs> I'm just grateful for my friends, man. I'm grateful. I'm not going to cry in this video now. I'm not going to cry. But I'm grateful for my friends. So that happened. And then 
I decided to go to therapy because there was just no other way. Like, I couldn't help myself. I know you guys were seeing me on social media once in a while, being all bubbly, trying my best. But when the cameras were off, <laughs> and I think we don't talk about grief enough and i probably would just talk about that in another video because it is it's hard it is hard take it from me losing a loved one is an experience that changes you forever but losing your mom a parent is an experience that you will never come out of nobody should tell me you do, you learn to live with it you don't even learn to live with it it just lives with you that experience is what is the one that tells you what to do i'm sorry <laughs> So I went to therapy and this is another thing that I feel we as black people don't really talk about or indulge in and I need you to come close on this one. If life is going through you or you're going through life, sometimes you might have friends and family who are able to understand and be there, but sometimes you just need therapy because there's nothing that would help you at that point in your life. So seek therapy if you need to. There is nothing bad in seeking therapy. If anything, you'll be glad you did because I'm glad I did. And so I went on therapy. Um, I'm grateful at the time I had coverage from work. So I was able to, you know, see my therapist often. We started with like every week and then we moved on to twice a month and then we moved on to once a month. And in June, because I couldn't really function, like it was starting to affect my day-to-day -day life. So I took time off work. I took about three months of work and that was also like a little bit good for me. So I, I traveled to Toronto to be with my friends, just, you know, to, to just to spice things up in my life. Because at this point it was just work. It was just me sitting with my thoughts when I come back from work. And mind you, I was working from home. So when I, when I close that computer, I'm sitting with my thoughts. I'm being miserable. I'm depressed. My house is a mess. Me that likes to have things, you know, in place. Y'all know how my apartment was looking at the time. But at this point, it was a mess because it was not so big because I tied the memory of my mom coming to be with me here to that house, which was the reason I got it in the first place. I wanted her to have space. My mom loves space. So I wanted her to have space to, you know, move around, do her thing. And the reality of never being able to get that, living in the house that was the reason, it was just messing up with me. My house then felt like a whole stadium and I was this tiny, tiny thing inside that house. So I knew I needed to leave that house. I was just done with tying that memory to the house, tying that memory to Winnipeg. I felt like, yeah, I needed to leave. I needed to, maybe moving out of this city was, was going to help me, you know? And at the time I was also thinking about film school. I know I've talked about film school a lot on this channel, so I don't even know at this point what to tell you guys. Maybe I'll discuss that in another video, why that didn't happen anymore. But I felt like, yeah, okay, maybe it's time to, go somewhere else. So I took that break, went to Toronto for two weeks. I came back end of June. I was still off work till like August. Um, I was still continuing therapy. My therapist, oh, that woman is a sweetheart. It, she really helped me understand my emotions, understand my triggers, understand that in this space where I'm in right now, in this experience that I'm going through, it's not a bad thing. I needed to allow myself. I needed to let myself sit with it. So I really had that few months to sit with it because when it happened in 2021, I think I was off work for a week or two and then I was back to work. So that, that didn't quite work. So October came, I was now back to work, but I still wasn't, I still wasn't, I wasn't even 50%. There were days I was a 10. <laughs> there were days I was a five. And there were days I was a 60, but those 60, those 70 days didn't quite last long. And so November, September, November, I decided, okay, I'm gonna finally move. So I, I moved out of my apartment and I took my things to a storage facility um, because I can't obviously move everything off to Toronto once. So I left, went to Toronto and then started to find you know how to 
get a house and you know start my life there I, I was living with my friend at this point she took good care of me we did Christmas together and then I decided oh I'm gonna take a trip I took a trip for three months in January and then I've, I, I told myself yeah I resigned from my work at this point because I just couldn't do it anymore I resigned and I told myself I said when I come back I'll figure my life out but this break needs to happen out of Canada maybe just going out of Canada for a bit would help my life you know so I did that left came back first week of April thinking yeah I feel good I'm on a high I came back and it wasn't quite long from that period when life told me again you, you think this is a you think this is a joke you you must you must really think we're playing here <laughs> I came back I was jobless no money no house no nothing there was nothing now the real life started to hit me couldn't find a house couldn't find a job i was able to stay with my friend but like my life needed to move do you understand because i'm used to doing my own stuff i'm used to being in my own space i'm used to just doing my own shit and i couldn't i made a video of me trying to find a house in toronto and how that was a a mess we all know toronto is a dead end so at this point i started to ask god my guy what's going on this cannot be the plan you said you had in jeremiah 29 11. what's happening what's going on here because i'm trying so hard god i'm trying so hard to do this life to have hope to be upbeat to know that your plans for me are good and not evil but what's going on and in that period i started to hear like but you're asking me now you didn't ask me if this was the right move you didn't ask me if it was right for you to do all of that and so i was like yeah okay right let's go back to the drawing boards because really i'd moved to toronto with no structure I just knew that my emotions were just all over the place. I was done with everything. I'd lost my mom. I'd, I'd gotten tired of this apartment. I've gotten tired of the city. I needed something new. I just packed my bags and I moved. I didn't consult God. I didn't ask, would it be right? No. So I was like, okay, you, okay, you don't catch me. You don't catch me. Okay, let's go back to the drawing board. So in June, I told myself I was going to come back to Winnipeg. That was a hard decision but again me i don't <laughs> i don't have anybody to impress you you people know me already it wasn't hard for me to come to that decision to come back here because the truth is i'm more at peace when i'm in winnipeg i can't even sit here and lie about that i'm more stable it's just that period there was something going on there was something in the waters okay and there's just this speed and anxiety and hustle and bustle in toronto that i really don't enjoy because i'm really not a city girl okay so i packed my bags and decided june that i was going to come back to winnipeg at that point i started to apply to jobs in winnipeg now so that maybe something would turn up so i came back and then at this point i'm staying with another friend because shout out to my friends man shout out to the one two three people that got me in the city because if not for those people ah you pulled that single for me i was this close i was this close because at this point my things are at different places in different friends houses today i'll go to this one's place and get outfits tomorrow i'll be i'll be at the other one's place for one week next tomorrow i'll be at the other one's place for three days that's how i was shuffling in this city and from april when i came back from my trip to october that's how i was shuffling which wasn't funny and that's why I was not able to actually be present online or even think about coming on YouTube because where I want to shoot I'm trying to figure out my life at this point I'm trying to understand myself it's almost like I'd lost my identity I'd lost I'd lost something and I just could not figure it out it was crazy my head there were days my head would just be like you know that picture that meme of that thread that was tangled my head would just be tangled i can't piece my thoughts together it was that bad so i was shuffling my friends places and trying to i thought toronto housing market was a mess you know when english people say 
life things could change in a day i'll be how do they say that parable winnipeg changed in one hour because i literally left in december to be back in in july that was one hour to me okay don't calculate it was one hour it wasn't long what had happened to the market i was being told two thousand dollars for a one-bedroom apartment one thousand eight hundred for a one-bedroom apartment and this one bedroom apartments were not even available at this point. Like what's going on? I applied to not one, two, three, four, five, seven apartments. And every single time they were looking for some reason not to give me the apartment. If you guys want a whole video on the housing experience, because I think I need to update looking for a house in Canada. I have a video about that before, but I probably need to update that. Let me know in the comment if you guys want all of that experience. It was one thing or the other. Mind you, at this point, I had no job history for about eight months at this point. I had no rental history since November. I had no financial status, so to say. I literally left Canada for three months and I came back. It was like I was, it was like I had just arrived in Canada again. So I'm trying to get back into the system. That is how this country is structured and it's so annoying. Because why am I trying to find my life? I just left for three months. I did not leave for five years. Well, yeah, in three months, everything had disconnected like wire. And I, I was trying to find my life again. So I was like, okay, one, five, one, six. Yeah, let's do it. Because I wasn't finding anything. I was ready to pay it, even though it was annoying as hell to be paying 1,600 for one bedroom in Winnipeg. Winnipeg. But yeah, it was one thing. Meanwhile, in this period, one of the, the jobs I had applied for, I'd done an interview, I think a few weeks after I came back to Winnipeg and you know, they had offered me the role, which was good because this was now going to help me, you know, at least some sort of stability because I just needed some sort of stability in my life. Something had to be stable. So I was not doing this with my hair business. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot to speak about that. Rewind. So in that period, in June, 2021, when I was, you know, trying to get my life together, trying to find something hopeful, I had started my business, so, so Logs. I will link it up here. Thank you guys for the support on that business because, ah, oh, you guys, you guys, thank you so much for the support because a lot of people didn't know I know how to make hair, but there are so many things you guys don't know about me. There are a lot of skills I have that I haven't even explored yet. I know how to make hair. I'm a professional makeup artist. I know how to like sew a little bit. There's so many stuff I can do with this my hands. I'm a jeweler. I know how to make jewelries. I know how to bead. I have so many skills and talents that I haven't even used yet and I'm hoping to be able to use in the future. So I, I, I went into my talent pocket and I brought out the hair making one. So I started braiding hair again and then even like frontals and stuff I can do. So now, Fast forward back to July 2023. I've gotten my new job. I'm still doing so so locks. And so I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's let's pay for it. Let's do the house because you people want to kill me with pricing and it's so hard to find a house. And I also decided, okay, maybe I should get a roommate. One, to save costs. Two, I was just done with living alone because I know what had happened to me. Um, and the fact that I was alone didn't help. So I just wanted something different. I've gotten this girl off this website. If you're looking for a roommate, it's called roommates.ca. So we had, we had connected and, you know, we started to look for a house. We got a house. We, we applied for it and we got the place. Apparently they approved us. So when it was time to sign the lease, which was a few days to us moving in, this girl woke up and opted out. I was like, wow. Okay. I woke up that morning. We had chosen the units. We had, you know, done everything just to go now, sign the lease and then move in. She woke up and said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to move forward with the lease. She sent it to the property management and, you know, cc'd me. And after that, sent me a text message. That was after like two days of literally trying to contact her so that we can go and sign leaves. At that point, I was like, there is no house for me. There's, <laughs> it's not possible. There is no way I'm getting a house in this country. And mind you, this was September. It's starting to now get cold. I had been in my friend's places for months from April to September. As I like, God, what is this? You told me 
The way I blame God. That guy is tired of me. I said, you told me. I didn't consult you. So I came back. June, July, August, September. Four months. No house. No stability. Do you understand that I need a house? Do you understand that I need a place to like relax and sit with myself? Because being in all of these my friends' places, I try to not I try to not be in certain moods so it doesn't look like oh maybe I'm I'm angry at something or whatever if I was in my own space if today I decide that oh I'm going to be a couch potato that's what it's gonna be do you understand like if if my emotions are dealing with me I don't have to force myself to put a smile on my face I could just be I could cry if I want to but imagine me crying at my friend's house and now I'm in a mess it's, I'm transferring that energy. They're in a the mess. So like, no. I'm like, God, just... I need a house, okay? Because it's not like now I don't even have a, a job. I don't have the money to pay. I have it. Why? What's going on? Why is someone disappointing me? And I had also decided I wasn't going to live downtown anymore because I just felt like I needed a peaceful environment and a peaceful ambience. Now that I'm trying to, you know, live a settled life i'm at the age where stability peace everything is important to me and i'm at the age where i'm trying to now settle down so like i don't want to be downtown where every minute wee, 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 blah! i don't need all of that but it happened that i had to come back to downtown because at that point in september the only places that were available when I started to look again after this roommate had opted out were downtown. And I was desperate for a place. I, I knew I couldn't go October without a house. I would, I would go around mad. So I applied to this place, which is obviously where I'm shooting from right now. It's a beautiful apartment. You guys saw it on TikTok and Instagram. You can check it out. I got this place. It was affordable. It was in an area in downtown that is quite peaceful and I took it. So moved in mid-October because that's when it was going to be available. So from September to October, I had to then again squat with another friend. At this point, I had gotten the squatting title. <laughs> but it was okay. It's life. And now I'm just like, I'm just taking life at a time. So I decided, yeah, I need to come back on YouTube now that I'm stable again because in all of that that was going on there was never a point where i could you know actually sit and take you guys along with what was going on because even me i didn't know what was going on like i said the last one year from 2021 october to now it was just october a few days ago it was my mom's second remembrance october 23rd from october 23rd 2021 to october 23rd 2023 and now it felt like that whole two years of my life had gone away. Like, I can't sit here now and tell you what I did with the last two years because it just, it passed by me. I wasn't even present. I wasn't even aware. I wasn't, there was so much going on with me emotionally and mentally that I could not place. And so I told myself, I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm going to come here. I'm going to share my experience. I'm going to speak about it because I know for a fact it can't be just me going through this. That experience took a lot from me. It took a part of me that I feel like I will never get back. So now what I'm trying to do is piece it all together, however much I can, um, trying to find stability again, because it's everywhere. Trust me, my head is everywhere. Trying to trace myself back and start to figure life out from where i lost it so i told myself i'm gonna come on here give you guys this update and then we'll take it from there i'm glad that i'm able to come back and do this and if you guys want me to speak on a particular topic that i'd you know just breezed through while giving this update let me know also more importantly you guys let me know what you want to see on this channel going forward because i really just came back here to give you guys updates i don't know what i'm gonna tell you guys next <laughs> so please use the comment section and tell me what you want to see because this is a place where i am able to tell you guys at length what's happening with me 
you know tiktok instagram they're quite like fast 30 seconds 60 seconds you have to get it going but here we are able to really dig in so you guys let me know thank you guys for all the support thank you guys for waiting for me thank you guys for always keeping tabs always being there like my dms like every time you guys are there you're supporting me you're supporting my business oh yeah thank you guys for for sitting back and watching this make sure you subscribe turn on your notification bells give this video that thumbs up share with your friends and family let them know shades of sosa is back okay and i'll see you guys in my next video bye bye